I come from a pretty musical family. At least I think I do. Well, what I'm trying to say is basically when I was a baby, I recall music just being around all the time. And so I kind of felt like um, my love of music and my semi-ability to play music has been, you know, all because of that. My father passed on his Beatles albums to my brother, who in turn played those while I was in a playpen. I actually recall being scared to death by Revolution No. 9 from the White Album. That song is seriously screwed up. It's not really even a song, it's just a collage of sound. Still, when you're listening to tunes like Julia and I Will, and all of a sudden you hear... Oh, God. So later on in life, I was introduced to a band in college at Radford University called Pat McGee. Uh, Pat McGee Band. He's from Northern Virginia, like me, and I saw him because a few friends that went to high school with me saw him somewhere in Arlington, I guess, and said, you know, you got to go to the show, you got to meet these guys, these guys are great, you're going to like them. So I give it a shot, and they performed live at Radford University's 1997 Highlander Festival slash Parents Weekend. And uh, when I was walking towards the stage there, over by the gym, the Deadman Center, they were playing a Paul Simon medley. And by then I was really into Paul Simon. And I was just totally floored. I've never heard or, or seen a Paul Simon um, song, or medley rather, played uh, with a band in this, in this way. It just sounded really good and just blew me away. So I actually was an instant fan. Now, it wasn't just the sound of the band that got me going. It was also the camaraderie that the band members had with each other. I mean, they looked like they were seasoned professionals. They acted like they were best friends, which they probably were. And I also liked the interaction that they had with the audience. I mean, even just a look or, or, or you know, just a wink or, you know, if they were interacting with each other on stage, it, it you know, it engrossed the audience in it, too. And it was really great. I had been to concerts before, and it seemed like, you know, they were they were zombies because they were under, you know, the, the label. And they were there just to make money, not just for themselves and not to share their music, but because they had a record company holding their leash. You know, it was like, you know, you can always just tell the difference between, you know, a band that's doing it for the love of music, and then there's a band that does it because their bosses tell them they have to. And with Pat McGee Band, there was just something really real about the whole thing. I mean, they were just, they embodied freedom, and, and it just felt good. I can imagine this is how the artists over at uh, Woodstock, you know, kind of had, you know, but uh, there were all those things going on at the time, so that's not really good, um, you know, comparison. Yeah. I didn't get my first Pat McGee Band CD, however, until three years later. A couple of my friends in the dorm had bought uh, some of Pat McGee's um, solo work. But now was the official band album. They had been signed with Columbia Records, I think, or Giant Records, which I think is a division of Columbia. I'm not sure how that works. Anyway, Pat McGee Band is no longer signed up with Giant or Columbia. I'm not sure. Um, but they still do tour, and they tour a lot. So they're out there, but for some weird reason, they haven't caught on to mainstream, which I don't get because they've got they've got artists like Matt Matt Nathanson, um, Howie Day, uh, John Mayer, Jack Johnson, Dave Matthews. I mean, they've got guys like these guys that are that are that are kind of in the same realm, but for some weird reason, Pat McGee Band has not has not joined. That, that level of those guys. I mean, he's pretty damn awesome. In fact, I think he already belongs up there. I think his, he and his band and, and, his, and, his, and their music is one step above all that. And recently, John Mayer's turned into kind of a, kind of a douchebag, and I'm a really big fan of his. Um, but yeah, Pat McGee, man, he's like, he's, he's above John Mayer. Maybe not in guitar playing style, but that's okay. John Mayer is by no stretch of the imagination a guitar playing god. But I like Pat McGee's music. It's just really, you know, I, I like the feeling of the band. You can just feel the band and hear the band there, you know? And, and that, 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 makes, that makes an album. So in the past few years, I've been trying to get to every Pat McGee band concert in the area. Earlier this year, he was at the National in Richmond, and I couldn't go. I think it was just because it was a Monday or Wednesday night, and I had just started the job, and there was just no way, you know, that I wanted 
to deal with a, a drive 45 minutes away to Richmond just to see him. I feel stupid for saying I couldn't make the trip 45 minutes away to Richmond because he was just recently at the Jewish Mother in Virginia Beach. And of course, I had to go there because I missed the show in Richmond. Felt pretty bad, so I had to make up for it. Decided to drive an hour and 20 minutes away, which is far worse of a drive than 45 minutes away to Richmond, but to Virginia Beach this time to catch the guys over at the Jewish Mother. What the hell kind of name is that? The Jewish Mother. What is this? I feel like Captain Kirk. Spock. All right, enough of that. So it says on Facebook and the Jewish Mother website that the show starts at 7, so we got there at 7. Yeah, it was not starting at 7. One by one, the band started appearing at the Jewish Mother, and I went and got up and talked to Patrick, who was their, their, their touring bassist. Not an official bassist, but he should be, because he's pretty damn good. Um, Pat. Yeah, I'm just saying. So I decided to get up and talk to the bassist. Uh, the bassist I saw for the first time when Pabagy Band was performing at Virginia Tech in Blacksburg, Virginia in 2008. And I had not seen this guy before, but he blew my mind. I mean, he was just really rocking it out with the band. And it was an outdoor live performance, and, and, and he was... He was loving it. So I went and talked to him, just complimenting him basically on, on his showmanship and, and his playing style. Uh, I loved it. And he was nice enough to actually take a break from his dinner, which I interrupted him in the middle of, and uh, chatted with me for a little bit. And we started talking about um, Cliff Burton, who was the former bassist of Metallica. Sorry. Um, and um, yeah, we talked a little bit about getting away from Rush. Slap in the bed. I went to the bathroom and I met Charlie. Charlie McEwen is, is, is one of the founding uh, founding members, not founding fathers, founding members. Charlie's soup is so cool. Charlie is like this tall, okay? You can fit Charlie in your pocket. And, you know, don't forget to feed him and don't sit down with him in there because that would kill him. Um, but, yeah, he's just like as go lucky as can be. I mean, he's always got a smile on his face. I've never seen anybody so happy in my life, um, even when he's not trying to be. Even when, you know, you've got weird crazy drunk chicks went up on stage and trying to play the bongos with them. Pat McGee showed up and he was hanging around the bar with the other guys and their sound guy. We had to leave early and I hated it because what usually happens is that after Pat McGee uh, performs, you know, you, you do have a chance to go up there and talk to him and, you know, buy him a drink or, you know, ask for an autograph or whatever. And I didn't have that chance. Um, so I gathered up the nerve to actually walk up to him and just shake his hand, be like, hey, longtime fan, um, can I get a picture? And I did. And he asked me if there was a song I wanted to listen to. Again, I'm at a loss for words because I'm, first of all, starstruck as hell. And then secondly, I'm like, aren't you busy? Don't you have a show to do? And you want to talk to dumb old sh I'm like stuttering. I'm like, hey, and, and really shy. I'm like, hey, hey, Mr. Mr. McGee. <laughs> you know? I, I felt, when I, in retrospect, I'll think about it. I'm just going, like, oh my God, man. I just need to go out there and do it. Just talk to the guy. But I was like, Mr. B Mr. McGee, hi. <laughs> Long time fan. I'm not going to be here for the whole show. Sorry, I suck. He, um, he took the picture and he asked me for a request. Um, just to make sure I heard it before I left. And the only song that came in my mind was the ballad, I Know. And then about 10 minutes later, they were up and they were playing. So it was really cool, because the second song, uh, Pat, Pat had just played Lost, opened up with Lost, and then said, hey. So I met uh, Mr. Aaron down here before the show, and Aaron said that he has got to leave. I don't know what possible reason work unless you have a child I got you have one. a child I get, uh, well, yeah. work yeah we get both a child and a work both and a job yep very good job very good very good that was freaking badass. I didn't think I'd get singled out like that. But I guess, you know, he's, he's like that, you know. Um, he doesn't have the corporate leash attached to him. Which, you know, in a sense, I really hope he gets that soon. And I know he's signed up with um, with a company right now. Yeah, my hats off to you guys again. Yeah, that, that was embarrassing. And I uh, hope to see you guys soon. Okay, enough of that. Buy their albums. Damn it. Check them out on iTunes. Um... Yeah, and don't be afraid to uh, go up there and meet them. <laughs> like me. Even though I did it, but still. Yeah. Peace. Disappear like it did from my life.